ear cartilage or the auricular cartilage is a very good source of cartilage which can be used for doing rhinoplasty. The other sources of cartilage that we use generally in rhinoplasty are the septum and the costal cartilage. The auricular cartilage or the ear cartilage is a very soft pliable cartilage and it is an easy source of cartilage without consuming much of time and comorbidity to the patient. Now in this video I will be telling you about the harvesting of the ear cartilage, the detailed steps so that you understand the nuances of this procedure auricular cartilage harvest. Now the approaches of auricular cartilage harvesting is two, one is the anterior approach and the posterior approach. The posterior approach hides the scar because we place the incision in the posterior aspect of the ear. So the patient is more comfortable with it but we have to understand the technicalities, uh, the finer points so that we do not land up in a deformed ear. Now coming to the posterior approach that I will be going through this video, what I do? Either I can do the procedure under local anesthesia or general anesthesia depending on the need of the case. In a bigger rhinoplasty case where the surgical time is long and we need to do a lot of work in the nose, we give the general anesthesia. But in smaller cases like little bit of tip work or dorsal augmentation, we can also do the procedure under local anesthesia. So what we do? First of all, we place the incision in the posterior auricular circle just anterior to the posterior auricular circles fold by around 2 to 3 millimeters. The length of the incision will be all along. Then we proceed on to the cartilage. We first incise the skin, go to the subcutaneous tissue and then go up to the perichondrium. Subperichondrially, we elevate the skin flap and we try to identify the helical rim and preserve the root of the helix. The anti helix the inferior and the superior stem and the crust and the stem has to be preserved. Now once we have identified this structure, we first mark the anti helical rim by inserting 26 gauge needle all along and therefore mark the posterior aspect of the cartilage because we will not be knowing where the anatomical structure is by the posterior aspect. So from the anteriorly, we have to mark these important landmarks through a needle then we once we needle is passed through and through then we connect the dots with a marking pen and thus the whole piece of cartilage is taken out and the cartilage will mainly consist of the simba and the cavum okay so this is a circular piece of cartilage and we will have to preserve the important landmarks as the root of the helix and anti helix superior and inferior crust and the stem once this piece of cartilage has been harvested, then we will ensure the hemostasis is done. Little little bleeders has to be cauterized and then what I do, I do not put a drain. I just take the subcutaneous stitches along with the posterior sulcus base tissue so that the dead space is obliterated. Then I put a running continuous sutures in the back on the skin with a 6-0 proline and we pack the posterior sulcus with loose gauze and also the ear with loose gauze and cotton. Then we put a good compression bandage on the ear. Once we have done that, then we shift to nose and complete the rhinoplasty procedure. Depending on the need, we carve the cartilage and accordingly we place the cartilage. So this technique as we have done, we have hardly lined up in any problem. We have also corrected couple of ear deformity that has been operated outside. And in those cases, this steps rather becomes more important because if you understand the steps clearly, then the deformity chances becomes almost negligible. Thank you so much for watching the video. I will come forward with more videos for other source of cartilage harvest. And if you have any queries regarding this procedure, you can just message or call us. Thank you.